Hello friends and welcome back. In this presentation series, we are going to review the nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and the autonomous nervous system or the autonomic nerves during the stress or anxiety or fear, how the sympathetic nerves kicks in and how the parasympathetic nerves try to neutralize our system. Okay. Before we get into the nervous system, <clears throat> let me share a couple of things with you. When we talk about, let's say for example, breast cancer, kudos and sincere salute to our scientists and doctors that they have done a lot of research when it comes to breast cancer. Say for example, heart disease. When it comes to heart, same thing can be said that our scientists, our doctors have done a lot of research that whether it's a pacemaker to treat arrhythmia or whether we have a stent or a bypass, you name it. We know a lot about heart disorders. But when it comes to the nervous system, we know a lot that our scientists and doctors have figured out, but yet they are still doing a lot of research. There are many things that we don't know yet as we speak. And as a result, they are constantly doing research and you will eventually see in this presentation series that for many of the brain disorders or the disorders as it relates to the nervous system, the cause is unknown. The ideology is unclear. Let me share with you a few things that we may not even sometimes notice. We all have in a normal human being, we have two eyes. Right? With two eyes, when we see any object, we see the stable image. We see the stable image and it appears as ease. When we look at the mirror, we see the mirror image. And sometimes we take the kids or children to the amusement park or the carnivals and they have lots of variety of uh, mirrors. Uh, try to create some funny images and we see that sometimes we, when we look at those mirrors, we see ourselves as being too obese or too tall or too short and things like that. Have we ever realized that how our optic nerve or the cornea or the retina or uh, the pupils, how they communicate through the nervous system, we have billions of tiny units, neurons through this nervous system, how they communicate to each other. We don't see, when we look at any object, we don't see series of images. We just look at the stable image. In mirror image, sometimes left may be reflected as right, as we normally see when we read the medical literature, left is right, right is left, right? But when we, the God has created such a beautiful natural eye, natural mirror, that when we look at anything, we see as is the real image as opposed to mirror image. It doesn't turn left to right, right to left. It doesn't turn upside down. How this anatomy of the eyes, how they correlate and communicate to neurons, to neurotransmitters, to dendrites, to you name it. Many of these medical jargons may not be uh, known to some of us. Right? We breathe. We breathe in. We breathe out. When we inhale, when we breathe in, we take the oxygen. And when we exhale, when we breathe out, the carbon dioxide goes out. Are any one of us ever trained how to breathe so that oxygen goes in and carbon dioxide goes out? 
I speak, you listen. Are you conscious, consciously making any efforts so that your ears can do their part of hearing and listening? Am I or can any one of us say that we are trained as to how to bend our tongue so that particular intended words are uttering out of our mouth? How that happens? You may like pizza and pasta. I like ice cream and cake. But how that taste gets recognized, registered and stored in our memory through the nervous system? You eat pizza, I eat cake, but while doing so, are we trained as to how we should be moving our tongue inside our mouth so that the teeth won't bite the tongue and we will continue to chew the food? How the nervous system works to recognize the taste, to chew the food, so that we don't bite our own tongue. Likewise, we don't realize from the time we get up till we go to the bed, there are many things we do, whether we are awake or whether we are sleeping, voluntarily or involuntarily, things are happening. So anything and everything we do, the nervous system behind the screen is the central controlling unit that supports each and every organ that God has created in our body. So that's the nervous system and yet we don't know many things about the nervous system and how the brain works. So it requires some discipline to understand the nervous system. I'll try to keep it simple and this is a must for the technical underwriters as a part of their continuous education and as far as the field partners or the customers are there, you are welcome to join. And for the field partners to better understand the customers in case when they ask you about any of the disorders or diseases, you can appropriately ask the follow-up questions. And or for the customers, God permit, either something happens to you or in your family, then uh, you can better understand knowledge is power. And likewise, if you are uh, discussing with your agent or the broker, you can have a meaningful conversation. So with that being said, let's move on. So as I was saying that it is the one of the most complex, one of the most complex system that we have in our body. And there are billions of nerve cells all over our body. And uh, the microscopic cells, we have nerve cells. They are called nerves. Some of the medical terms we need to know, so I'm going to throw some, and there are some internal chemicals like acetylcholine, uh, they activate the membranes and all that. The energy that is released inside is called the nerve impulse, and they pass through. Uh, we have the external receptors like the sense organs, they work together uh, to get the desired results. So broadly speaking, we have a central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. When we say central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, those are the two things that we say when we say central nervous system. And everything other than that falls under the peripheral nervous system. And in the peripheral nervous system, there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. The cranial nerves carry impulses between the brain and the head and the neck. Uh, the 10th cranial nerve is called the vagus nerve. It carries messages to and from the chest and the abdomen as well as the head and the neck regions. The spinal nerves carry messages between the spinal cord and the chest, abdomen and the all extremities. Now in addition to the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, what we have in our body is called autonom autonomic nervous system. So the way it works is this, when we have anxiety, stress, fear, 
the sympathetic nerves is a part of autonomic nerves will kick in and they will act quickly because of stress, because of anxiety, because of fear. And then the parasympathetic nerves, they try to neutralize to calm us down. Okay? So there are some medical jargons that we need to know. Like uh, these nerves are called afferent since they carry impulses away from the central nervous system. So you have a efferent and afferent. It's a two-way street. Think like sometimes customers are contacting the agents and the brokers and sometimes agents and brokers are contacting the customers. Sometimes company contacts the customers or company contacts the agents brokers. Agents and brokers are contacting the company. It's a two-way street. Okay. So I'm not going to get into the medical terminology as we have our field partners and the ultimate customers they may be watching this uh, presentation series okay so uh, the parasympathetic nerves as I was referring to they try to balance once we go through that anxiety stress or fear okay so what normally happens is uh, during the anxiety stress or fear our heart pumps faster the heart rate goes up the blood pressure goes up things like that right and the parasympathetic nerves they try to neutralize they try to bring down to the normal level and there are a couple of medical terms like ganglia uh, they are the collections of nerve tissue outside the brain in the spinal cord and then you have uh, uh, plexuses they are the larger network of nerves prevalent in the autonomic nervous system okay so think this way, central nervous system means your brain and your spinal cord. Peripheral nerve system includes cranial nerves, spinal nerves and autonomic nerves. In the autonomic nerves you can have a parasympathetic nerves that kicks in when you have a stress, anxiety and fear. Um, that is actually the sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerve is the one that tries to neutralize. Okay. And as I was saying that it depends upon the, your role and the uh, company that you represent. So this is we already covered so I am not going to get into that. And uh, I like this slide because it, it from eyes to you name it, top to bottom, it covers the various organs, how they would act in a sympathetic or parasympathetic scenario. So when we are dealing with anxiety, stress or fear, oh my lord, when will coronavirus end? Things like that. So everybody, they have their own tolerance level, they have their own perceptions, but God has created a beautiful body and accordingly our different organs will act and there are billions of tiny units called neurons. That neurons will constantly work to make our entire body work okay and this is the ultimate slide I could come up with where we have a parasympathetic nerves and sympathetic nerves you have a central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and in peripheral nervous systems besides other things that we already reviewed um, the last but not least is the autonomic nerves that covers the parasympathetic nerves and the sympathetic nerves Depending upon the situation and the scenario, your heart rate or your blood pressure goes up in the sympathetic nerves and likewise every organ would act differently. Just like that, the parasympathetic nerves as opposed to the sympathetic nerves would try to neutralize and bring your blood pressure and heart rate under normal. So this is just a, a macro overview of the nervous system that we will follow. We will move on from macro to micro and we will get into the microscopic details as we move forward. Okay, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.